Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video we're going to have a look at how you can animate a shape along a path and then also point the shape in the direction of the travel around the path as well. Um, and then as a bonus, I'll also show you how you can deform a shape along a path. Um, so in this example we've got some rectangles that are being bent as they travel along the path. So um, I'll also show you how you can do, do this because it uses the same tools. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to draw a path using the pen tool just to begin with. So let's um, Let's do that, and this is going to be the path of, that our objects are going to uh, follow, um, and something like something like that will do. Hit enter to just finish drawing that. Um, actually, I'm just going to go back into the tool. I'm going to move this slightly further off the screen. Same for this, just so we don't see these things appearing. Um, okay, so that's our path, um, and uh, we also need an arrow. So I'm going to alt click on the arrow primitive. And um, that'll do, we can just use that shape. Um, so the way that you get things to move along a path is using the Pathfinder, which um, as the name would suggest, it finds a position on a path. Um, so we can add that by right clicking on the position attribute because the Pathfinder is um, connects to the position attribute. So we can right click on position, go add behavior, and what we want is the Pathfinder. Then we can double click on the Pathfinder to bring its settings up. And then the Pathfinder takes an input shape. That input shape is this path. So we can drag this editable shape in here, which is what we drew with the pen tool. We can drag that onto the input shape. And then as we move the travel, see that we're moving the arrow along the path. It's as simple as that. By default, the path loops. Um, so when you get to the end, you go back to the beginning. And um, if you scrub the travel backwards, the um, opposite happens. Um, but we also want the arrow to point down the path. Okay, so the um, the Pathfinder, um, uh, the, where the rotation is stored, is inside the value tab. So what we need to do is drag the rotation from the Pathfinder onto rotation on the arrow shape, like so. And then um, we're done, basically. Uh, so there's nothing else to do as far as we're concerned with um, animating the, um, the arrow along the path. Um, and then I'll just quickly show you how I set up the rest of that scene in cases of interest. Um, I grab the arrow shape and put it inside a duplicator and, um, oh, nope, I didn't. <laughs> undo, undo. Um, because the arrow shape is moving, I can't add it directly to a duplicator um, because uh, because it's, it's, it's transform um, is being set. Uh, it's position, rotation, scale, uh, pivot. If any of these are being set, you shouldn't add it directly to a duplicator. What you need to do is group it first. So I've grouped it, and then I with the group selected, now I can hit the um, duplicator. And you can see this is now in the right place. Um, so this is the look that we get. Um, we don't want this um, grid distribution. Um, let's go for something like a random distribution like so. Uh, we'll have less than 50, let's have this many, and then we'll bring those in a bit as well. Um, so this is our, our result. Um, let's color these things in. So we'll just uh, pick a, um, a library palette and then we'll um, create a, an array from that palette and then what we'll do is we'll drag the output of the color array which is this blue dot up in the corner and we'll drag that onto um, ooh, what I have I don't need sorry what I need to connect it to isn't visible and um, so I, I need to connect it to the um, arrow shape and then I wanted to connect to the fill color and so each of these has now got one of those different colors from this array um, and then maybe what we can do is um, on these arrows we'll add a filter and the filter will be a drop shadow filter um, let's just maybe knock the visibility, knock the um, colour back a little bit so that the shadow isn't as strong. We can maybe open it up. Um, and then, um, so on the on the duplicator here, we can, um, I was going to say, we want to animate these things actually moving along the path because there's actually no animation is there. If I scrub the timeline, there's no animation. Um, so um, we'll do something on the duplicator in a second, but on the pathfinder, uh, we want to animate the travel, and the way that we'll do this is very simply. We'll just add a frame behavior, which uh, means that we just counts up basically. So we're just counting up. Um, that's what that does. Um, so we'll do that, and then on the duplicator, um, what we need to do here is just add maybe a random to the shape time offset. So let's do that. We'll go add behavior, um, random, and um, we'll go and change some of the settings on the random, something like this maybe. Um, yeah. So these things um, kind of just lying along the path, which is great. Uh, so that's basically what I did in the other scene. That's how I created that scene, uh, just with a different background color and you know, you can turn the path off or whatever. Um, and you can have more of them if you want. So um, yeah, like that. Uh, so that was basically what I did. Um, and now I'll show you how you can do this with um, deforming a shape along a path. Um, so I'm gonna create a new scene. Um, and again, I'll just draw a shape um, like so. 
move off to the side and then do that. Okay. Um, okay, so there's my shape and I'll create a rectangle. I'm gonna make the rectangle long and then I'm gonna add lots of edge divisions. Now edge divisions are needed and I'll show you why in a second. It's so that we've got some geometry to bend. Um, there's a little, I'm not happy about the, not happy about the kink in that path, so I'm just going to change that. Um, and um, again, with the rectangle, what we need to do is right click on, no, we don't. <laughs> we're not adding it to the position this time because we're not moving this along the path. We're going to deform it along the path. So when we're deforming things, we need to use the deformers. So I'm going to hit the plus button next to the deformers and I'm going to add the pathfinder to the deformers this time. And then again, I drag the edge of the path into the input shape. And as I change the travel, you can see that this thing um, bends along the path as it moves. Now I'm going to turn looping off, uh, which means it will just fly off into the distance if I go over 100% or minus 100%. Um, I can show that more um, I show that more accurately if I grab the path and then move that on screen. If I go below zero, you see that this is just going to carry on in the direction of the first point. Um, same uh, for the end, if I carry this on past 100% without looping, we're just going to go off the end. Um, with looping and deforming, the shape will kind of like, um, it will uh, get split between the end and the beginning of the path. It's not a good look, let's not do it. Um, so there's the travel, we're doing that, um, and that's great. And then if I wanted to, um, oh, I'll show you the edge divisions. Um, if I change the edge divisions, you can see that the quality of this deform is changing um, as I as I do that. So uh, obviously, with no divisions, there's no kind of there's no bend as this thing <laughs> moves around the curves. Uh, but if I add more divisions, then obviously that gets smoother, um, much nicer. So that's how that's why the edge divisions is important. Um, and then basically the same steps as the other one, um, just uh, adding it to a, a duplicator and changing the color and all that kind of thing. But basically, that's how you animate or deform things along a path. Hope you found it useful.